Welcome to this week's episode of The Better Half. I'm Kendra D. St. Alban, and this is Katie Hartley. And we're going to take a look back at what's been going on this week. Well, Kendra, Peyton Manning has made it official. He will play in Denver next season. He's looking at five years, $96 million. Not too bad for a guy that just had neck surgery. Kendra, what are your thoughts on him signing with the Broncos? Well, not only for the fact that he had neck surgery, but he's getting kind of old. I mean, five years yeah. is a lot. So I'd be interested to see all the details of the contract. But I was surprised that he ended up going to Denver only because at least we in the media made such a big deal about the weather and that he would maybe want to play nice weather or a domed stadium. Obviously Denver not a domed stadium and of course the weather kind of sketchy there but maybe that was just the media. Maybe it was just us making a bigger deal than it really is. I think we did. I think we we made all this hoopla about it but I think that Denver not the best looking girl at the bar, but she had a good personality and Peyton Manning is a good guy. So I think he made the right choice. And heck, if you get $96 million, the first year is $18 million guaranteed, the number that he'll be wearing next year on his jersey. I love it. I mean, get on with your bad self, Peyton. Whatever you need to do, you found a team, you like it. I mean, but look at the other options. I don't think the Cardinals would have paid that kind of money to have Peyton Manning. Who wants to work with a guy like Bud Adams? Like, are you joking? You know, so I mean, if you look at everything else, and I don't think the Dolphins knew exactly what they wanted to do either. So, I mean, really, if you looked at all, all of the teams who were seriously courting him, I think he made the right choice. Well, and what does this mean for the Cardinals, honestly? I mean, I think Peyton Manning also, part of the reason he didn't choose the Cardinals is because they had that timeline. They had to give mm -hmm. Kevin Cobb that $7 million signing bonus, that roster bonus, and he had to make a decision in a certain amount of time. So maybe that also limited him choosing the Cardinals. But I think this kind of puts Kevin Cobb in another tough spot. He got that signing bonus, and yes, he quote-unquote sort of is the guy again, but what does that do for your confidence if you're Kevin Cobb? I feel bad for him. Like, I am starting to kind of feel bad for this guy because he has been through a lot. Like, he hasn't even been on the roster, what, a year yet? And, I mean, he's got to go through this now. I'm starting to kind of feel bad for him, and with all the concussions, I mean, yikes. Do we and just, need to look out for his mental health? Well, and just kind of bad luck almost. I mean, because the same thing happened to him in Philadelphia. You know, he got hurt and got bumped out of the starting job. He comes to Arizona, gets this huge, huge contract, all this pressure, and then he gets hurt. He can't play. He can't prove himself. So, I don't know. He's pretty laid back. So, hopefully he just comes in with a full training camp and a full offseason, and he can get right to work. So, if Peyton Manning is the starting quarterback in Denver, what about Tim Tebow? I mean, you can't not talk about Tim Tebow if Peyton Manning is now going to play in Denver. So, I mean, what the heck do you think is going to happen to this guy? Well, as we were talking about before, I mean, I think he'll find a place to play because if, even if he's not the greatest quarterback, he definitely seems to put butts in the seats. He gets fans yeah, to the games. Yeah. And if he goes to a state like Florida and he plays for somebody like the Jacksonville Jaguars, at least from a PR standpoint, I think that would be a good move by them because he may not be the best quarterback for their team, but I think he will attract people there, especially since he played at Florida. And you see critics on either end of the spectrum. You know, oh, the guy's so great, I love him, or oh, he's terrible, teams will figure him out in a hot second. But, I mean, the guy is a tremendous athlete. I don't think anyone can argue against that. And he's a great leader. And I don't think, even with all the media attention that he's been getting, I don't think that he would bring any negativity into a locker room. And I think that's got to be important with teams these days, you know, when you've got your Michael Vicks running around. And a guy like Tim Tebow, I mean, don't you think he's he makes a team better regardless of whether he's your starting quarterback or even maybe plays at another position? Well, yeah, and I think I think you're absolutely right. He is a good locker room guy, a good quote-unquote clubhouse guy. Right. So just to have him around, I think, is a huge benefit. And it's going to be a huge benefit for the community, too, because he's so into the charity stuff and obviously – all the things he did for the kids with the T-bowing and the chemoing and all that kind of thing. So I think he's just a good guy to have around. But I don't think anybody thought that Tim Tebow was the answer in Denver yeah. anyway. So you can't be totally shocked that they brought Peyton Manning in. Yeah, well, enough about the NFL. Kendra, how is your bracket? <laughs> Mine, too, giant thumbs down. My bracket sucks right now. Well, you know what's funny is we were actually tied for the lead in points. I know, I so know. So it's really deceiving because you think you're doing good, and just when you think you maybe, you know, turned a corner, you find out that Florida State is in your <laughs> final and that Missouri is in your final four, and you are screwed. And that is good. the spot that I'm at right now. Those are my two teams that are absolutely bracket busters for me, Missouri and Florida State done. My bracket, I think, is over. And my two chances that I took last week were on uh, Wichita State and Long Beach State, both of which lost in the first round. I think I had them winning one or two games each. So 
I am apparently not very good at picking sleeper teams. Yeah, I mean, I can try to act like I know what I'm doing right now because we're, we're tied for the lead with points, but we both know that we're going to go yeah. down in flames pretty quickly. Yeah, that's okay. Well, speaking of the tournament, we saw some hot new looks. How about yeah. some of those uniforms we saw over the weekend? I was a little impressed. I mean, first of all, I think Oregon, you know, Nike are rubbing off on people with yeah. some of the looks that we saw from Baylor, which you really love. I you love the whole unis. look of Baylor. What I didn't like about Baylor was Check the that socks. out. It looks so good. I, and you know what? That's Adidas. So they're trying to kind of go in a new direction, you know, following Nike's path. But I didn't like the socks. They look like leg warmers from the 1980s, which totally threw me off. But Cincinnati's hideous. <laughs> this camo, like from far away, not bad. But when you got closer, you, no. it was just hideous. Sometimes I think teams just try too hard. I like the old school classic look, like a yeah. North Carolina or a Duke, just real simple. Yeah, I also liked Long Beach State's uniforms. It said beach real big across the front. Kind of made me want to go on vacation. So it actually had nothing <laughs> to do with the uniform, just the fact that it had the word beach on it, which yeah. is not a bad place to be. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't makes think me, so either. Makes me want to go on vacation. <laughs> we were we're going to need a vacation after the bracket beatdown wraps yes. up, and we have to deal with our punishment of losing. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be fun. Let's plan on that. Mm -hmm. All right, Kendra, we are out of time. You can follow her on Twitter at Kendra620. You can follow me at FunKatie620. We'll be back next week with another webisode of The Better Half.